Did you think it was over? Not even close. What would you do if you were taken from the one you love, dropped in the middle of a rebellion? And you couldn't leave. A Michaela Laws production. The epic finale of Seduce Me to Tome. Seduce Me to The Demon War. I promise that I will never hurt you. I will take care of you for as long as I live. I will spend my entire life loving you. I will make sure you have a happy life. Will you be mine forever? You will never leave this world alive, or will you? James Bradley Garrett, Eric Christopher Eklasenti, Damien Jonas Scott, Matthew Ethan Nakasama, Sam Alejandro Saab, Demon Lord, Marky Tichi Chocobo, and then these names are going too fast, I'm not even gonna bother. But ooh, cool, new characters, new art. The fate of your love in the demon world is in your hands! <laughs> Flames inside, seduce me to a Tomei theme. Composed by Christopher Escalante, learned by Michael Laws, vocals by... Oh, I couldn't get to the vocals. Oh, man. Anyway, love this trailer. Who will rule? Welcome back, everybody, to another brand new Let's Play. I'm kicking... I'm continuing on with my Otome kick. Uh, with the sequel to Seduce Me. This is Seduce Me to the Demon War. Um... For those of you, as the title, for those of you who are not familiar with the series, as the title implies, this is the sequel. This is a sequel to the Seduce Me Atomi series. I'll put a link at the bottom somewhere, in the description at least, uh, if you wanted to check out me playing the first Seduce Me game. And oh, the music! This is, oh, this is, this, this is from the soundtrack from the original. It might be slightly uh, tweaked a bit, for for um for the for the second I guess iteration of this series, but oh that's that's great. I was happy that they brought back the main theme again. This this does actually sound uh, a little bit different. Oh yeah, this is different. We've got some vocals in this one too. Um, so I am super excited to continue on our story. Um, so I am planning on on. Uh, going with, at least for starters, continuing the story of Harkura with her, at least my canon relationship, which is with Damien. Um, and uh, I guess these are all the gems that, that uh, represent, yeah, I think these are the gems that represent the romances. So I think, I think Damien, I think Damien's yellow, if I remember correctly. Matthew is blue, um, and then Harry Potter was green, <laughs> and then, yeah, 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 and then, okay, and then maybe this one is supposed to be for Diana, is my guess? Anyway, um, let's go start with the tutorial. I'm not sure if the tutorial has anything. Must I do this? Oh, I love how everything is, I love how everything is voice acted. By Michaela, Michaela the, uh, the person who created the series. Come on! You have to be the one to set the example! You're the goddess of the rebellion, the matriarch of the new demon world, the savior of demon kind! Okay. And that is why I must give a tutorial? It should be simple enough to understand. It's an interactive story with minimal controls. I love how they break the fourth wall. You gotta let people know how to read your story correctly so they can play the visual novel without accidentally screwing up! It's so important that they know all the things that they can do! My lady, it would help in our cause if the players knew what to do. <sighs> Very well. The basic controls come from your computer, keyboard, or mouse. There are multiple ways to go through the story using one or the other, or even both if you desire as much. If you use your mouse to left-click the screen, or press the enter or space keys, you will proceed forward in the story. It is important that you pay attention to what is being said, because you may be forced to remember something in the future. Nice. However, if you've seen narration or dialogue before, you may hold down the control key to skip forward. If you don't care to hold down a button, you can press the tab key to toggle the skip function. 
Doing so will fast forward you through the section until you press the tab key again or reach an unread section of the story where the function shuts off automatically. Oh, that's good to know. I don't know if that was a feature from before. If Thank you can't you. be bothered with the keyboard, there's also a skip button you can click on near the dialog box, alongside buttons where you can save or load your progress, set the story on auto mode, go to the options menu, or simply go back to the main menu. Okay, thank you. If you proceed far enough, you may be faced with a story-changing choice. Remember, every choice you make affects this war, and war is unforgiving. And war never changes. Now, you may decide your choices with the mouse by hovering over your answer with your mouse pointer and left-clicking it, or you may select your choice by using the arrow keys and confirming your choice by pressing the Enter key. Use this wisely. You will not be able to change your answer later. If you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can roll past sections you have already read by rolling the wheel backwards until you reach new unread text. Mm -hmm. You may also roll back up to ten sections in case you miss something by rolling forward. But be warned, your choices cannot be altered. Unless you restart or lo reload. Isn't that a bit unfair, my lady? As I said, war is unforgiving. We can't fix our mistakes by going back in time. We can only remember the choices we made and what the consequences were. As you say. Fair enough. Well, if the player saves right before they make a choice, they can just reload their save and make another choice. True. Did you say something? Mm. No, nothing at all. Yes. If for some reason you wish to capture a moment on screen without the text box showing, you can Ooh. press the H key, then press the S key to take a screenshot, Ooh. which will be saved in the game folder. Ooh. Don't worry. You can continue the story and show the text box again by repressing the H key. Oh, I like that. I like the that. The right-click function on your mouse and the escape key both bring you to the save menu. Use this wisely. You will be asked if it is okay to overwrite a save if you choose to save over old progress. I believe that is everything of significance. Is there anything that I have missed? I think that should be everything. Awesome! May we leave now? We do have a war to fight, and I need to lead my armies to victory. Go, go, go! Win your war! Score the goal! Win the points! War doesn't work like that. It does in her mind. Come, we're leaving. I like Kay. She's she's a cute little redhead. Cute little ginger. Yes, my lady. I love my gingers. <laughs> Hi, Kay. Hopefully, I actually... this war doesn't end tragically. Then again, I guess that's up to you, right? I actually do have a very close friend, one of my closest friends, who actually was in my groomal party for my wedding, is named Kay, uh, but it's a he. Yeah, it sort of has that, sort of has that, um, what is that called? Agent K, uh, men in black kind of feel to it. But anyway, at least when how I explained it that way. What is it, Kay? All right, so let's, I think Damien was yellow? Hold on there! Oh, hi, Kay. Hello Before again, Kay. Before you start the game, I need to ask you a few things. Don't want you getting lost now. Well, I appreciate it. First of all, have you read the first story, Seduce Me the Atome? Like, seriously read it. Yes. No skimming, no pretending to read it. No, no. It, it's okay if you haven't, but there are a lot of things in this game that you won't understand unless you fully experienced and understood that story first. I think I'm covered. I played through the game at least five times, like with all five of the boys. So I think I'm pretty covered. I've read it. Oh, okay. Awesome. Next question. You do know this is James's route, right? You know, the oh, eldest James incubus. Was yellow. Uh, no, I didn't know. Well, now you do. It's not too late to go back to the main menu and choose another route. Just click the main button in the dialog box and you'll be transferred back to the main menu. That's right, I forgot. It's been a while since I've played this game. So is Damien... I think Damien was... That's right, Damien was gray, I think. Oh! First of all... <laughs> this goes to show how much of oh, this I know. You do this know is this is route. Damien's route, okay. right? You know, the demon that wanted to be a human? The, uh... Bastard son. Right, I forgot. Uh, for what? I kind of. All right. Anymore, never mind. <laughs> I'm good now. I'm good now. Oh, awesome! All right then. Damien is such a precious soul, he and is. he deserves to be happy. You know. 
He is. He's such a he's such a cinnamon roll. He's such a anyway, peachy cinnamon roll. Anyway, I have one roll. last question for you. Some people like hearing the trigger warnings before they start games, while others don't really care and just want to play. It's cool either way, but do you want to know about some of the content listed in the game? Sure. No problem. Thanks. It's my pleasure. Well, this game is recommended for players ages 18 and up. Trigger warnings include suicide, war, torture, mentions of rape, and a large amount of violence and sexual content. All right, I think I'm good with that. Don't worry, though. Any sex scene choice you encounter is completely up to you. You can play this game without needing to go through the sex scenes and still get the good endings. Consent is important. See, I like that. That's what I really like about this game. That's, that's, that's very cool. Because, you know, some people want to play this game because they do enjoy the storyline, but not necessar but it doesn't necessarily have to involve the sex scenes. So that that's I'm glad that they made sure of that. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. I think that should be everything. All right. Phew. That took a while. You forgot something. Oh, hi, Diana. Huh? What did I forget? You forgot about the disclaimer. Oh, crap! Oh, how could I have forgotten about that? It's fine. I'll take care of it. <clears throat> This game was produced by Michaela Laws using the Renpy Visual Novel Engine. We truly hope you enjoy this story. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Now, don't you have a war to go fight? I do. I just wanted to make sure everything was in order before the story began. I'll take my leave now. Thanks, Di. Do not call me Di. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we really do hope you like the story. Have fun! See you at the end. All right, we'll see how well I do with Damien this time. I told him I had no regrets. I told Damien a soulmate sacrifice. I told Damien that I did not regret for one second that I made a deal with Diana to make him human. I stood steadfast and knew what I was doing. Okay, so we're assuming that in this story, we did actually make Damien human, which I think was supposed to be, at least as far as the designers, Michaela, considered to be the quote-unquote best ending. But I still didn't like the choice I had made. Something in my gut didn't feel right about what I did to Damien. Yes, I knew that Diana wouldn't have raped him, but what if she had? What if I gave her permission to do so and I didn't know it? What if he didn't want to go through with it and Diana really did sleep with him anyway? I was mortified at the choice, but I had just wanted him to be happy. Every time he said my name made me feel so happy. Every time he held me or kissed me was a moment I carved into my memories forever to cherish. I loved him and wanted him to be truly happy. Damien reassured me that Diana didn't do anything to him, but I could not help but imagine it and even dream of it. <laughs> so, bastard son. Do you truly wish to become human? It's the original you know music again. Well that I am capable of making that happen. I will not betray her trust. Oh, yay! It's Damien's voice actor again! What she doesn't know won't hurt her. Besides, don't you want to be human so you can be with her and not put her in any danger? Stop it! I couldn't stop illusions of what Diane and Damien could have done from appearing in my dreams. Like a scene doomed to repeat over and over, Diana, shrouded in shadow, would loom over Damien and show herself as the evil woman she truly was. Damien, however, would struggle, fight to get away from her. I didn't want to see this, but I was forced to watch the scene play out. Stop it. What makes you think you're in a position to say no to me? I won't do it, Diana. You can't make me do this. Oh, can't I? Your precious little human isn't here to save you. I tried to scream, to protest, and prove Diana wrong, but I knew that I wasn't there. I was merely a bystander to a dream I could not stop. I was forced to witness Diana chaining Damien up to a black bed and touching him in the most sensual but unwanted ways possible, her nails and tongue running along his skin made both him and me flinch and whimper in disgust. Stop it! What? Oh. Are you not enjoying yourself? You're an incubus. And even more than that, a man. 
Surely you can enjoy this treat in exchange for your precious humanity. This was wrong. This was sick and beyond wrong. I felt like I was outside the small bubble Damien and Diana were in, and I was beating against the wall, trying to get in and stop her, but I couldn't break through. Each movement Diana made grew more and more sexual, like a predator playing with its prey. Damien struggled, thrashing about and fighting back against the chains that held him down, trying to break free. I prayed that he would. I screamed in the hope that he would be released from this. However, Diana glared and snapped her fingers, forcing him to grasp, forcing him to gasp and his eyes to glow gold. He began to quake as if he was dying and starved like an animal, and glared angry daggers at Diana, who only laughed. What sent deadly shivers down my spine was Diana looking over at me, as if she knew I was watching. Remember, dear, you made this decision. Diana chuckled before leaning close to Damien's face, licking over his mouth and straddling his hips. She was a cute little diversion, but now it's time to have some real fun. As Damien began to scream, I suddenly awoke from my nightmare, mentally unable to take being trapped inside of it anymore. Huh? Oh, Damien! Oh, it's the same room again. Besides me, I, I heard and felt Damien rise out of bed in response to me waking. I looked over at him, seeing him quickly rub his eyes and look at me with worry. Hey, what's wrong? I knew he couldn't read my mind anymore, so he couldn't have known what I had seen. I still couldn't help but need to embrace him from the dream I had. Grabbing Damien's arm gently, I began to whimper. Huh? Hey, come here. Aww, I love, I love, 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 love Damien's voice actor. He does such a fantastic job. Damien gently wrapped his arms around my form and hugged me to him, petting my back. I let out a weak mule, shutting my eyes and trying not to cry. Damien gently kissed over my head, trying to calm me down. Everything's okay. It was just a nightmare. I'm right here. Aww. His voice helped me slowly start to relax, knowing that what he said was true. It was a nightmare, not real. I couldn't shake all of the sadness from my mind, but I calmed down enough to not let it control me anymore. Damien gently rocked me, his arms wrapped around my body lovingly. As he softly whispered my name, my mind simply melted into a peaceful hum. What is your name? Harkura. Everything was okay now. Everything was fine. I looked up at Damien and rubbed my eyes as he loosened his embrace around me. I'm sorry, I just... I just can't stop thinking about the deal I made with Diana. I told you before that it was fine. Honestly, it's nothing to worry about. Damien gently kissed my forehead before pressing his to mine, nuzzling me softly. He stared deep into my eyes with a loving smile, one that made my heart ooze in happiness despite my worry. I cannot be any happier than I am now. I'm marrying the woman of my dreams as a human, an actual human. I owe everything to you. Damien. I rubbed my nose against Damien's, closing my eyes and wrapping my arms around his neck. I knew he was being sincere and was truly happy. I had to get over my fears and deal with it. He was human now, and we were going to be married soon. My heart truly couldn't believe it. I was going to marry to Damien. I was going to marry to Damien. I was going to marry Damien, and we'd live happily ever after together. It was so good I couldn't believe the truth of it. However, I was always reminded of the reality of it every time Damien held me in his arms. Damien smiled before kissing my head and patting the bed behind Come me. Come on. Let's go back to sleep. I'll be right here if another nightmare appears. Aww. I nodded and slowly fell back onto the mattress, cuddling up to Damien as he laid beside me. If the nightmare came back, Damien would be in my arms, reminding me it was all fake and just my imagination. Everything would be alright. The night quickly passed by, and the morning sun peeked through my window, when my window drapes, and landed perfectly over my eyes, waking me up. I stretched and yawned, not wanting to get up just yet. However, the emptiness of the bed next to me made me open my eyes wide, finding no Damien beside me. Well, that's a, that's a problem. Damien? I sat up and looked around the room after rubbing the sleep from my eyes. Damien was nowhere in the room, which confused me. Where was he? Oh, good morning. Oh, breakfast and bread? Oh, he's wearing the same outfit he did before. Aw, oh, so adorable. I looked over at the door to see Damien holding a tray of breakfast with two plates full of delicious food. In a vase, 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 
Beside my breakfast plate were two beautifully bloomed white roses, which made a soft smile uh, grow on my face. Morning. Is that for us? <laughs> yeah. I figured why not have breakfast in bed. He's such a sweetie pie. You are so sweet. Thank you. Damien smiled and sat beside me, placing the tray over both of our laps. The smell was practically intoxicating in the best way as possible. Before we began to eat, however, Damien picked up the TV remote from the nightstand beside James's him. James' big toy reveal is today. Do you mind if we watch? Sure. I shook my head, eager to see it as well. James had become the CEO of the Anderson Toy Company, so I was curious to see how he was doing and how the company was holding up. Apparently, it was rising higher and higher off the top business rankings, and soon to become one of the top 500 businesses internationally. I was proud of James, but I was more happy to see that Damien seemed to be his number one fan. He was always giddy whenever he talked about all of his brother's accomplishments. It was adorable. Damien grinned before turning to on the TV and changed the channel to the local news station. It was, it was one of the best news stations out there, and I was not being biased. Anyone who claimed to love Chicago knew it. All right, so here we have an interesting story to tell. The Anderson Toys Company, an internationally famous toy business, has just recently announced a new line of toys in development. According to the CEO, the line is said to focus on fantasy. Let's take a look at the public announcement. I am more than happy to show off our new line, Fantasy Kingdom, for you all this morning. These toys will not only provide friendship and fun for children around the world, but will help inspire imaginations and let creative minds grow. I could not help but squeal at what I saw on the TV. All lined up in a row were adorable, cartoon-like stuffed fantasy dolls glimmering in the broadcasting lights of the TV station. There were knights, royalty, and creatures of all kinds, some not even truly fantasy. Damien, however, laughed quietly at the sight. Huh? What? They're all really cute. They are. Only a couple of them are real, though. Huh? Really? My jaw dropped. Some of the creatures that were represented were actually real. I knew demons and devils existed, but were more than were, but there were more than them. My mind began to imagine all of the creatures on the screen being potentially real. Damien nodded and pointed to the TV. Vampires are real, but they don't look like that. They look like humans. No way! Please don't tell me that they shimmer in the shimmer like diamonds in the sunlight. Please tell me they don't. I could not believe it. There was no way vampires existed. Damien, however, nodded with a reassuring kin. I mean, if I know demons and devils existed, I'm I would not be surprised if my vampires existed too. I promise it's true. Werewolves used to exist too, though they were killed off by the vampires long ago. Hmm. Let's see. Oh really? I don't know. I have a feeling that that might be just what people want them to believe. The werewolves want them to believe they were all killed off, but... I looked at the TV to see the vampire doll and werewolf plush sitting next to each other, being simply cute and stereotypical of what most people imagine them to look like. Damien then pointed to the screen again. There. The angel toy? <gasps> Angels are real too, only they don't look like that. <laughs> I looked over to see a beautiful gold-haired doll of an angel. They really didn't look like that? I tilted my head at Damien. How do they look if they're not like that? Well, they look... Um... Damien rubbed his chin, unsure of how to reply. I could tell he was being serious and wasn't lying about them looking different, but they seemed to be hard to describe. Damien then shook his head. They look like old statues. It's really hard to say without drawing it out or something. Really? Hmm. How about angel arts? Angel arts, Damien. How about those? I really wasn't in the mood to get up and grab paper and a pencil, so I shrugged and let it go for the moment. Dame and I looked back onto the TV, seeing the entire line passed by the camera, showing what toys were available. I'm wondering if we can turn Damien into an angel. That would be sweet. Heh. I'm surprised they didn't make a demon toy, like a cat girl or something. I don't think many people would understand it. No, it would be cool to have a demon doll. Like, like, like the bunny demon, or the squirrel demon, or whatever that little adorable little toy thing that Matthew made for me. Oh, I love Matthew too. I guess you're right. They are for kids, after all. I looked at Damien as he became absorbed in the line of toys. I couldn't help but smile at how intrigued he was. It made me curious. Hey Damien, did you ever have toys as a kid? Damien looked at me in surprise before shaking his head with a slight grimace. No, I didn't. Matthew made some for me sometimes, but they were always taken away. Really? I frowned. I was sorry for asking, but Damien shook his head again and smiled. However, 
when we came to the human world, I actually got one. It was a stuffed kitten. I didn't do anything, but it was fluffy and cute. Oh my god, Damien, this is so adorable. Writers, Michaela, of course you would have Damien have a stuffed kitten, like, plushie. That's just, oh, can we, can, can we, that's like, Sir Pounce a lot all over again. Damien rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. It must be dumb, huh? A grown man with a cute toy like that? No, I find that it's ridiculously hot, actually. <laughs> Very endearing. No way, it's cute. Damien stared in shock at me, but I was being serious. It didn't matter that Damien was a man. Cute toys were cute for a reason, and it was okay to think so. Having cute toys is not a bad thing at all. That's what some toys are meant to be. Cute. It doesn't matter who has them or how old you are. Cute is cute. It was just a fact to me. However, Damien couldn't help but chuckle softly before bringing one hand to my head and petting over my hair. You are so adorable, you know that? I know. You're adorable too. Huh? huh I blushed and looked down at the breakfast tray in front of us. I wasn't that cute. I felt myself rub the back of my neck in embarrassment. Shh, shush. That made Damien laugh and kiss my cheek, forcing a gasp to come out of me. I looked at Damien and he smiled a playful grin at me. It's true. We both turned back to the TV and listened as James explained each toy in detail. I looked over to Damien to see him practically enthralled with the sight of his brother presenting his line. I gently nudged him, making him look back to me. Jeez, you're making me jealous. It's like James is enthralling you through the TV to buy his toys. I, of course, was joking. Damien was very happy for his brothers, especially James. With a raised eyebrow, Damien gently removed the tray from our laps, placing it on his nightstand before crawling over my body and making me lay back. I stared up at him in surprise as he gave me a seductive smirk. And what if I was enthralled by you? Uh, uh, oh. I was speechless. Damien was full of surprises, even as a human. He didn't have the ability to read my mind, but he knew exactly what to say to make me squirm. How is he this good? He was human now. Damien chuckled before leaning down and kissing me. Despite him not being a demon anymore, his kisses were always so magical. They each took my breath away each time his lips touched mine. I loved them. I wrapped my arms around him and deepened the kiss between us, forgetting about what was going on with the toy line. All I could think about was Damien's kiss. It was sweet and passionate, eager to make my body quiver underneath the one kissing me. However, the sound of our stomachs rumbling in sync forced us to break away from the kiss and look down at our touching, at our touching bellies. Oh, you guys haven't even touched your breakfast yet. <laughs> Maybe we should eat a bit before we continue this, huh? Good idea. <laughs> as much as I wanted to keep making out with Damien, I knew my stomach would keep interrupting, and so would this, would his, un and so would his, unless we ate. We ate the delicious breakfast Damien made while watching the rest of the news. It was a nice segment, and Matthew even appeared to help during James's presentation. Ah, uh, Matthew! I love Matthew. Soon we were flipping channels and watching random shows. The day passed to buy lazily. We barely left the bedroom because we just didn't want to do anything. I feel like in my canon, like in my canon story with Harcora marrying uh, Damien, I feel like Matthew and Harcora would be super close. We would, would be super, super close, you know, siblings and laws. It was rather relaxing, surprisingly. I know we had to work on the wedding arrangements eventually, but today was not the day for that. We needed a day to ourselves to remind each other that we were going to be together for a long time. It wasn't long before we found ourselves cuddling into each other's arms, taking a mid-afternoon nap. It was a sweet and peaceful drowsiness that lured both of us to close our eyes together. The darkness of my mind invited me to stay a while, and I gladly accepted its invitation. It felt nice, and I was enjoying the rest it gave to my body. It gave my body. However, I soon saw that I was not alone in the dark. Whoa, Damien slowly appeared before me and took my hand, kissing it gently. I felt myself shudder, but it wasn't his nude form or his kiss that surprised me. It was his eyes. My mind recognized those eyes, shivers shooting up my body from the sight. Instead of the loving and soft blue and purple eyes, purple as eyes usually were, they were a deep gold. They bore into my soul as Damien continued to keep his lips on my hand. The Damien? <laughs> As Damien smirked against my skin, my body began to feel hot, making me curl into my body. I tried to pull my hand away from him, but he held it firmly, keeping his lips against my skin over my knuckles. Gah! No! I recognized the feeling. He was enthralling me. Why was he doing this in my dream? Why was this happening? 
We continued to float in the darkness, his enthrallment invading my body as he held my hand to him still. I had to make him let go. I had to. Stop! 